J.E. Skeets is a big basketball fan. So when the Toronto broadcasting student finished school, it was natural for him to launch a podcast with his friends. Episode 342, November 14, 2008. A cookie has no soul. The Basketball Jones brand of fan-friendly analysis started to catch on. Then they got the call of a lifetime. Here's NBA TV calling and contacting us and going, hey, we like what you're doing up there. Would you be interested in coming down to Atlanta? Good evening, sweet world! And, and so the Basketball Jones became The Starters, a daily that. TV show where Skeets... You don't want this straw or you're getting a wedgie from Shaq. ...interacts with idols in ways he never imagined. Ready? <laughs> yeah, ready. One, two... <laughs> the Starters are part of a new wave of podcasts moving from your phone to your TV. The confessional comedy of two dope queens started as a podcast. Now it's right here on HBO, straight after Game of Thrones. We're not, we're not after Game of Thrones. I'm Aaron Mankey. And this is Lore. Lore, a podcast about disturbing folk tales, is now on Amazon. That's just a few of the growing number of podcasts attempting the TV transition. Part of what's driving the trend is the explosive popularity of podcasts. Five years ago, only 12% of Americans listened to podcasts monthly. Now it's up to 26%, an estimated 73 million listeners. In Canada, more than 7 million Canadians listen to podcasts at least once a month. And with millennials as the biggest portion of the audience, broadcasters are looking for ways to tap in. All right, so here we are, our very humble podcast network studio. I see it still needs a little work. We are expanding rapidly and the <laughs> startups focus not on the, the, the nice chairs but on the work we're doing. You know? right. Here at E1, it's not so much about how the recording room looks, that's the beauty of the podcast, but discovering new voices. The industrial process of making TV and films in this country is so difficult. Um, and I think what's the interesting opportunity about podcasting is that it allows us to build up authentic voices and authentic audiences for Canadian stars. I don't think we believe every single one of the podcasts will translate, just like every book doesn't translate, but it is another avenue to find a point of view. And there are a few that we have in development that will translate. Why should I invest in your podcast company? It's the Cadillac of podcast companies. But not every podcast can manage the transition. Startup was a wildly popular podcast about Alex Bloomberg's attempt to set up his own company. But as Alex incorporated, the comedy lacked Bloomberg's personal touch and was cancelled after a single season. For J.E. Skeeks, the TV learning curve was steep. We were definitely naive at first. We thought we could take a podcast and just put on some cameras and make a television show and we quickly learned that just does not work. I fear this sandstorm to be quite a terrible event. Which is exactly why after theater tours and a book deal, Night Vale, a podcast about the stories in a strange small town, handed the entire pilot over to the showrunner from Better Call Saul to develop the TV show for the FX network. My experience with television is, is that that level of intimacy is a lot different. You know, it's, it's a lot more plot based. It's a lot more narrative and visual. And so we really do have to rely on people that know how to make those things. If the Night Vale pilot is picked up, it'll reach more people than the podcast ever did. The question is whether podcasters can keep it personal as TV comes calling. Eli Glasner, CBC News, Toronto.